Hello everyone, I'm Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create multiple records in Power Apps using the for all and sequence functions. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, SharePoint, Teams, and Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because we put out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so I will be showing you guys how to use a for all in sequence function in Power Apps. So my use case for this is I'm going to be creating a SharePoint list, which I already created. It's going to log each employee's equipment. And with that, each equipment has an ID number. So let's say I employ one person, they need two monitors, uh, two laptops, two notebooks, and let's say they need two headsets. So they need two of each. I want to create eight records in here. I don't want to go in and create a record for each one. I just want to have a combo box and I'm going to state he needs two of them. And then I'm going to use the for all in sequence to say, hey, this person needs two laptops. We're going to create two records and we're going to move on to the next one. So to start, I'm just going to have a basic label at the top. So I will be making this uh, mainly from scratch if you just care about the code you can probably just skip to the end of the video where i show it so in my case i'm going to use this every time i have a new employee and i need to assign them equipment so we're going to create a screen in power apps create new employee equipment record and then i'm just going to make this a bigger font and i will put a button next to it you can make a nice UI for this. I'm just uh, making a very basic UI just so I can show you guys the back end code of how it's actually working. All right, so I'm just going to add a border on this. All right, so every time I want to create something, I will click on this button. And then when the user clicks on the button, all the other fields are going to show. Mainly I'm using this button to create a collection to where I can store each item and the appropriate value for that item. Let's go ahead and do a clear collect. And this is the on select for the bun. Let me go ahead and create a new equipment record. So within this record, I'm going to have, in my case, I'm going to use four items because the employee can be assigned four different things. It's going to be a laptop, a headset, a notebook, and then monitors. So I will make a four rows in my collection. So item, that's going to be the equipment. So in my case, the laptop is going to be called laptop and the amount. So the amount is going to be the amount needed. I'm just going to set this for zero for now because if it's zero, I don't want to create a record for that item. And so I'm just going to copy that and then paste it again. So my next item is going to be monitor. My next item will be headset. And then my next item is going to be notebook. Let me close this up. So every time I press this button, it's going to create a collection for the new equipment record. Let me go ahead and add a comment here. Good practice to write comments in your code in case someone else comes in and reads it. So in my case, create new collection with new data. All right, and then I don't want to show the combo boxes until the user actually creates something. I'm going to create a variable to show combo boxes. I will set bar combo box to true. So anytime the user clicks on this button, I'm going to set that variable to true. And then in the on visible property for all those combo boxes, we are going to have the var combo box. And since it's true, they will now show. Let me go ahead and create some basic combo boxes. So in my case, 
I'm going to make labels and associate combo boxes with it. So laptop amount needed. So we have my laptop amount needed here. I'll just center that and make this bold. And then I will also update the labels. So label laptop needed. And then I will associate a combo box with it. Combo box. So for the items of the combo box, I'm just going to have uh, numbers. I will go up to five, and that's how you create items for a combo box. And I will also set this combo box where allow multiple selections is false because users can only choose one value for one record. And then I'm just going to, just going to copy these uh, four times because I have four different items that a user can be assigned. And then I'm just going to rename them all. We will do label, we'll just go in order here. So laptop monitor, headset, notebook. I highly recommend that you rename your uh, components in your Power App. If you don't, it's gonna be hard to actually look and see. So in my case, combo box one underscore three. I don't really know what that's associated to without uh, the label. We'll go ahead and update the labels as well. This one is monitor. Next we have headset. All right, so users can select any value here. So for updating the values in my collection, so if I go ahead and click on create, going to create a collection and I can view that collection if I double click on the a collection name in my code. So we have four rows, laptop, monitor, headset, notebook, and then I'm going to give each one a value. So when the user changes this combo box, I want to update the collection. And then after that, we will have the for all in sequence to where it will patch all those into my SharePoint list. I will go ahead and Actually, I'll add one more, and that will be for the employee name. And then I will just add a input box here where the user can add an employee name, get rid of the default value in there. So I don't wanna show these boxes until the user clicks on the create. So I will go ahead and group all of those components together. And we have them all, so I'll go ahead and click on group. I can assign this visible property to the variable. So variable bar combo box. So since it's true, since I already clicked on it, it is going to show right now. So if I go to my on visible property, I want to set that variable to false. So it does not show when a user clicks on this screen. We'll go set bar combo box false. And let me go ahead and create a new screen, then navigate back to the other one. As you can see, it's no longer showing until I click on the create button. So that is a nice little trick you can do to hide and show things on your screen. All right, so I think we're good to go here. I do need to add on the on change property of these combo boxes. I need to patch my collection for that specific row. So in my combo box for the laptop, we will do patch. It's going to be my collection. I'm going to look up on that collection for the item. So in my case, this first one is laptop. Make sure the spelling and capitalization is correct to your um, I, what your item actually is. So I'm just going to patch this amount, which is going to be for the laptop row, a self.selected.value. So it's going to look at whatever's in your combo box and put that value in your collection. So if I go ahead and click on two here, my collection should update now. I'm going to look at the collection by double clicking on the name here. 
And we now have two for the laptop amount, which is exactly what we need. I'm going to go ahead and copy this code for the on change property. And I'm going to apply it to the other four. So the next one is headset. I'm going to go to the on change property. I'm going to update the lookup field here. So it looks at the headset row. So that should work now. I'll navigate over to the on change for the monitor combo box. We'll change the lookup to monitor. And last, I will do that for the notebook field. So let me go ahead and just add some values to these. So my user needs one headset, they need three monitors, and let's say they need four notebooks. So if I go ahead and look and see what's in my collection, we now have the appropriate values for the amount for each of the items. And now we can go ahead and work on the button that will actually patch all these records together. I will update the button here. We will navigate to the on select property for the button. So in my case, I want to go through each row of the collection. So laptop, headset, monitors, and then notebooks. I want to look at the amount. I want to create how many records are in that amount. So in my case, laptop says two, so it should create two rows. So let's go ahead and do a for all. So for all my records in my collection, which is COL, what is the collection called? All new equipment record. So for all of those items. So it's going to go through each row in that collection one by one. So this is where I want to do a for all. So I'm doing a second for all. And then I'm doing a sequence function on the amount. So the sequence, if you don't know what that function does, it generates a single column table of sequential numbers. So in my case, since I have four in my sequence, it's going to run that four times since it's in a for all. So it's kind of like a loop. It's going to loop through each of my amounts. So it's going to be twice for the laptops. And then the next one's going to be one and then three, then four. So overall, it's going to run and create 10 rows of data in my SharePoint list. Let's go ahead and do a comma here. And now I can actually write my code, which will be a patch. I'm going to patch in my new employee equipment list. Since these are new records, they will be defaults. And then I'm just going to add the title. So my title will be whatever's in my input box for the employee name. This will be input employee.text. And then for my equipment, the equipment is going to be whatever the item is. So I can just put item there because it's going to look at the current row of the collection, which will be in the first case, laptop. And then I can just close up those for all statements so this is the code you're going to use if you want to do something like this with a for all in sequence let me go ahead and add an employee name here so let's see i want to add it for myself when this runs i want to reset what's in the combo boxes let me go to my button again write a comment reset combo boxes and then i'll just do reset the input employee name and just add each of those combo boxes here. Okay, and then once this is completed, let's just send a notification to the user. So notify, and then I will do notify. Records have been created. Please navigate to the SharePoint list to assign IDs. So 
in my case, let's say my laptops, my notebooks, my headset all have a specific ID associated with them. Uh, the user is just going to go in and once they give out the item, they're going to write down the actual ID for that item. All right, let's go ahead and run this. It should create 10 records, two laptops, one headset, three monitors, and four notebooks, all from Michael Alex. So I clicked on the button here. So records have been created. Please navigate to the SharePoint list to assign the ID. The combo boxes all went away. And if I navigate to my SharePoint list, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we do actually have 10 records. So that is how you use the for all in sequence. One last thing here. Let's say I have another user, Bob Green. If I put zero in the sequence, it's not going to create any record for that. So no laptops will be assigned. Let me go ahead and run this again. So for Bob Green, there should only be a headset and a monitor. Wait for it to load. So now we have a headset and a monitor for Bob Green. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is a longer video, uh, more intermediate with the coding. Uh, if you like the video, please leave a like. If you don't like the video, please leave a comment and tell me what was wrong with it. Feel free to subscribe because it lets me know that you guys enjoy watching them. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you guys in the next video.